Okay. So this is a piece of silkrete from the Honey, Hunter River. It's just a water roll cobble. And the first thing I'm going to do is just roll it around and I'm looking for those acute angles. There's an angle there, but if you think about it, that's almost 90 degrees. Okay, you could hit it there, but I don't think you'd get a flake to come off because it's much too steep. You know, you hit it on these surfaces, no way, you're not going to get anything because that's way more than 90 degrees. It's like hitting on that flat surface. Um, you can see on this rock, there's lots of little circular cracks in here. Those are the tops of Hertzian cones that have been embedded in the stone as it rolled up and down the river bar, or down the river, uh, hitting against other stones, and it's embedded all kinds of Hertzian cones in there. Um, that cortex or outer surface usually is, is not very deep. Uh, those cones aren't embedded very far because there wasn't a lot of force behind the rocks hitting against each other. Okay, so what we've got here though, if you can see that we've got a beautiful acute angle on the stone right there. So if I hit it somewhere up in this area, I should be able to get a flake to come off the underside. So that's what I'm going to do. Like I said, I don't know if this hammerstone's up to it because it's it takes a lot of force, especially for this first flake. But we'll give it a go. adjust it a little bit and do it there instead on that old flake scar. That sounded a little better. Got a little one. Okay, so this is the platform. This is the surface I struck. It crushed a little bit. Okay, but that's called the platform surface. So the bit that comes away on the flake is called the platform on the flake. And also we refer to the surface that was struck on the core as the platform as well. Now this is the core, the part the flake came off of, and that's the flake. Now I'm going to rotate it, because what that's done for me is that scar has given me a nice surface right there, which is a really nice acute angle. One thing I haven't mentioned so far is the acute angles that you strike have to be behind, be behind a ridge or mass on the core. Okay, You can't hit behind a hollow spot or a flat spot or a negative depression on the core because your flake has nowhere to travel. So here we've got a nice platform and it's behind this nice bit of high mass. So I'll rotate it around, try it with the hammerstone again. You can see that the hammerstone is not doing very well. It's fractured quite a bit. That was better. Okay, so there's our flake. Here's our platform up here. That's our PFA, our point of force application. It looks just like that, that one I sent around earlier. Um, fits back on the core like that. That's the flake scar. This is the platform I struck right here. It's the platform that I hit to get the flake to come off. So we've got the platform on the flake here, the little remnant that came off from the core, and that's the platform on the core itself. So uh, it's a nice big flake. So now I'll rotate it again, because again, just like the last time, taking that flake off created a nice platform surface there. So I'll strike that. Okay, another nice flake. There's the platform. It's on like that. Okay, I'll take this opportunity to talk about cortex. Cortex is the outer surface of the stone, the original outer surface of the stone when the napper started working. I call this sort of cortex fluvial cortex 
just referring to the fact that it's the cobble was from a river you can tell by the way it's all rounded and it's covered in those Hertzian cones now that first flake I took off that didn't do very well would have had cortex on the platform okay so we call that a cortical platform of course the surface of the stone that I struck was actually the cortex but if you think about it taking that flake off I, that next flake I struck was actually on the negative scar that was created by the, removing the first flake. I call that a single facet platform, okay? It's a facet rather than cortex, and there's only one scar on there. So that's a single facet platform to take that off, and same with this one. Now, rotate this around. You can see that the entire dorsal surface of this flake, that's uh, the outer surface of the flake, this is the dorsal, that's the ventral, the part that fits back onto the scar. The entire dorsal surface of this flake is cortex, okay? So one thing that archaeologists do is they estimate the quantity of cortex in their assemblage. Um, that would be called a primary flake because it's covered with cortex. Um, this next flake here, it would be the third one that I took off in the series, actually took off part of the previous scar from the first flake. All right, so there's a number of ways that archaeologists deal with this. One way, oh, the piece broke off, it's somewhere in the sand. But one way they do it is they estimate the uh, percent of the dorsal surface that's covered in cortex. Um, the way I do it is I make it really simple. It's either 100%, like this one, um, and this one for that matter, um, or it's greater than 50%. This would be greater than 50%, or it's less than 50%. Um, and then, of course, you have flakes that don't have any cortex on them at all. I haven't pr produced any of those yet. Okay, so there's our core so far. Been reducing it bifacially from two faces. Okay, so now I'm going to hit it here because what I've got is a really good platform surface. And we're going to travel the, we're tr going to try to get the flake to travel down this zone of high mass that was created by this flake scar intersecting with this bit of cortex here. All right, so rotate it around. Give it a good wallop. Working in sand is really nice because you can, the way you can rotate the core and stuff and get it really secure in the sand. Down in the Hunter River Valley, um, lots and lots of artifacts in the uh, riverbed there from where Aborigines for thousands of years have just been going down into the river gravels and working the, the cores and things um, right there on the river. Um, okay again you can see this one has a lot less cortex on it. That was the previous flake. Took it off, created that big scar, struck this way, took that off and it removed part of the that previous scar with this flake. Again there's our core flake fit onto it. Here's our platform. It's a single facet platform. Okay, ventral surface of the flake, dorsal surface, and then the flake scar. Okay, so we're getting some really nice flakes here. The silkrete's not the best silkrete in the world. It's, uh, it's got some inconsistencies in it. But you can make some really good tools out of it. Okay. So now what I've done, that was the last flake I took off. Uh, what next? Um, I think what I'll do next is hit it here because we've got a bit of an acute angle here and see if I can't get a flake to come off this way. It's a little getting a little bit tricky because we've got a, a rounded edge coming along here. But I'll try it and see if that gives us a, uh, another new platform for going back that direction. A lot about this stone working is strategically removing flakes, thinking ahead about where removing one flake will give you a platform or a window into taking stone off somewhere else. Uh, crushed it. I'll move up a little bit. Yeah, that happens quite a bit. Okay. What happened is what's called a serrette fracture, a serrette fracture. Plus a bit of dorsal spalling there. 
little bits are all buried in here. When I struck it, the stone fractured apart at the point of impact. Okay, that's the platform there. The back side of it sheared off and then the flake split right down the middle from the PFA, the point of force application. And we call that a, a serret fracture. I won't go into that now, but it's actually a fracture that, that bends, the flake bends in half towards the ventral surface like that. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be. It, it depends what you're trying to do. That's still a nice piece of stone there, even though it had that serrette fracture. See, but now we're starting to get this sort of stuff accumulating. This is the sort of material you might expect to see at a quarry site. It's all the little bits of shatter, flakes that, uh, that weren't any good, that sort of thing. But even though that platform shattered, what it did for us is it created, by removing this flake, it created a new potential platform right there to try to come down this ridge which is what I'll do next. You can see my hammer stone is really getting quite beat up on the end also buried in this sand somewhere hopefully they didn't hit any of you guys but there's things like this that's a hammer stone spall okay you'll see this on quarry sites you'll see it you see them a lot actually and what it is, it's, it, when, especially with this heavy percussion like this, the hammerstones just can't put up with it forever. And they break and they spall and they fracture. Um, you see those on uh, archaeological sites, especially quarries all the time. Really worn, beat up hammerstones. Um, we did an excavation at a quarry in Nevada in North America. And uh, right down on the bedrock of this, these quarry pits had been filled back in. We, we found scores of hammerstone spalls that had just accumulated from all the stone working that was going on. Um, and eventually it gets, once they start spalling like this, it, tend, it can get pretty bad pretty quick, but we'll keep going. This is one reason why I sometimes use this copper bar, is because this is indestructible. Um, not terribly authentic, but if you're just trying to make flake blanks for experimental purposes, it's, it's uh, fine. But I thought I'd demonstrate with the hammer stone. That's a little better. Okay. So there's that flake. Which one went there? That one went there. So you can see how the complexity of these dorsal surfaces is developing. All right. On this face, this was the first one that came off in the series. It created that scar. That one came off, created that scar, and then that one came off. And the interesting thing is, if you look at um, those two flakes, morphologically they're very similar with these big scars like that along the side. And that's the sort of thing as an archaeologist that you've got to be really um, focused on is looking for patterns where you get things that happen more than once probably what you're seeing is a pattern in the way the person was reducing the stone in my case if you think about it I've been very patterned in the way I've done this I took off a flake there then back this way then back this way this way finally that way so it's bifacial it's creating this sinuous morphology on the core it's creating these flakes that only have cortex along the one side like that all right, and I'll show you later some cores that are just like this uh, in the type collection. All right, um, I think I'll, I'll stop there. And uh, you guys have seen kind of the basic concepts behind doing the stone working. And uh, we'll turn you loose. Now, when you start doing this, don't try to make these huge flakes. Um, just concentrate on the smaller stones and just trying to get good flakes to come off and getting a feel for scars and, and platforms and that sort of thing. Um, doing these big flakes like this, um, it takes a lot of a lot of practice and experience to, to figure out how to get those angles just right and where to hit it. All right, is there, are there any questions? Cool. I guess we'll start in then.